singing songs, having fun. I want to go to Bada Learn about God's own son. Let's all go to Bada Papa! Papa, I'm here. I'm ready to do the club. Papa? That's strange. He's always leaves me a note or something. Oh, there's a message. Hold on. This first new voice message from telephone number 9783029193 received today at 11:56 a.m. Hey Reg, this is Papa. Hey, I had to run out. Uh, Papuli was supposed to pick up uh, his friend Jack at the pier today. He was supposed to come in and his car wouldn't start, so I'm going down and we're going to pick up Jack. Um, so we'll do the Papa Club when we get back, all right? Hey, uh, I would stay inside too because it looks like it's going to be a pretty bad storm out there. Take care, Reg. I'll see you soon. Bye. Oh, great. Now I've got to be here all by myself. I hate thunderstorms. Oh, I get so scared. What did Papa tell me to do when I was afraid? Oh, think of the song. Oh, what's the song? I've got it. Hi kids, you know this world that we live in can be kind of scary. If you've ever been afraid, listen to today's story which is called Lost in the Woods. Hey, said Billy, what's that noise? What noise? asked Jason. I didn't hear anything. Both boys stopped and listened. It was so dark they couldn't see anything without using their flashlights and the trees all around them made deep shadows. The boys were on their way home from a hike. That afternoon, they had asked their mother for some sandwiches and had gone for a long walk through the woods to a neighbor's farm to play with the children there. It was almost dark when they started back, and maybe that's why Billy kept thinking he heard funny noises. Jason didn't hear any at all. Come on, said Jason. You must be just pretending you hear things, because I don't hear them. All I hear is us walking along and talking. No, said Billy. I think it's probably a bear or something that wants to eat us up. I doubt it, Jason said. There aren't any bears in these woods. Well, then it's probably a lion or a tiger, said Billy. You're always thinking things like that, Billy. Why don't you just try to think about nice things, maybe like a kitten out there, or a lost puppy, or something like that? And anyway, every time we walk through here at night, you think you hear things. 
but nothing has happened to us yet, so I don't think it will now. Well, anyway, I'm scared, said Billy, and he began to run down the path. Suddenly, he hit his toe on a rough place in the ground, and he fell. He had been running with the flashlight in his hand, and when he fell, the flashlight hit the ground hard and went out. Suddenly, it was dark. Billy lay on the ground in the darkness and cried. He wasn't hurt, but he was scared. Oh, he sobbed, we'll never get home. Now all kinds of things will come and eat us. Oh, fooey, said Jason. They wouldn't want to eat a crybaby like you. I'm not a crybaby, said Billy, and he sat up and stopped crying. If you're so good, how, how are we going to get home? And if we try to walk, we'll get off the path and we'll get lost. Well, said Jason, we'll just sit here on the path until Dad comes looking for us. Stay here and get eaten up by those bears? Oh, no! And Billy started crying again. Ah, quit being a baby, said Jason. Don't you know that God is always taking care of us? He knows where we are, and we'll get home okay. What's the use of being a Christian if you don't trust the Lord? Well, said Billy, I suppose you're right. Say, he said, sitting up straight, does God always take care of Christians so they don't ever get hurt? No, said Jason. Sometimes God lets them get hurt and even die, but he still is loving them and doing the best things for them. But I don't want to get hurt and die, whimpered Billy. Well, maybe living in heaven would be better than you think, Jason said. Just then, the boys heard a shout, and they shouted back. Billy even quit crying. Soon they saw a light bobbing up and down the trail, and soon Dad's big arms were around them. They told him what had happened. Dad said, Well, the Lord took care of you. I guess maybe he wanted Billy to learn that lesson about trusting him. Yes, said Billy, I think so too. I'm going to pray that he will help me trust him and not be afraid. So here are the questions to think about and talk about today. Number one, what made Billy afraid? Number two, what happened to the flashlight? Number three, does God always keep us from getting hurt? And why, why or why not? Number four, does God love us even if he lets us get hurt? The Bible says in Isaiah 12, 2, I will trust and not be afraid. I hope you have a safe day today. And remember, until next time, Papa loves you. What are some things that comfort us when we're afraid? What, what things do you hold on to when you're scared? You know, sometimes people like to have a teddy bear or another stuffed animal and they can hold on to it maybe during a storm when they're afraid or in the dark when they're going to bed. Um, and, and that can bring you some comfort, but I don't think it will always protect you from many of the dangers that are in the world. Uh, some people like to have a blanket, a very special thing to cuddle up with and that makes them feel safe and secure. But there again, I don't think that these kinds of things can always protect you from a lot of the dangers out there. You know, there are some grown-ups that think if they have a lot of money, that that will keep them safe as well. And that's their security. And, and even though money can buy a lot of things, it can always buy protection from some dangerous things that can happen in the world. There is only one who can provide that kind of protection. And that is God. It says in Isaiah 12 too, Behold, 
God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. That means he is strong and he can be a protection and he will give us the salvation. He'll save us from all kinds of dangerous things. So instead of grabbing a teddy bear in a blanket or maybe putting trust in money, maybe we should put our trust and faith in the Lord. Well, that didn't help. That made things worse. Oh, what am I going to do? Ah! What was, there's someone at the door. Uh, who is it? Me, Long Jack. I'm looking for Papuli. Oh, that's Papuli's friend. Come in. Papuli was supposed to meet me at the pier. Oh yes, Papuli's car wouldn't stop. So Papa had to give him a ride there. Have you known Papuli a while? Aye. He was me skipper when I was just a cabin boy. The name's Long Jack. Would you be minding if I sit down? I had to walk all the way here and I'm a bit tired. Oh yes, please. I wish Papuli were here now. He always sings to me when I'm afraid. Why don't you let me sing you a song Papuli used to sing when we were in a storm? Oh, that'd be great. Cheer up, ye saints of God, there's nothing to worry about. Nothing to make you feel afraid, nothing to make you doubt. Remember Jesus never fell, so why not trust him and shout? You'll be sorry you worried at all tomorrow morning. Come on, sing it with me, lad. Cheer up, ye saints of God, there's nothing to worry about. Nothing to make you feel afraid, nothing to make you doubt. Remember Jesus never fails, so why not trust him and shout? You'll be sorry or worried at all tomorrow morning. You'll be sorry or worried at all tomorrow morning. Have you guys ever been on a boat? in the ocean before? Let's take a trip with Jesus and his disciples on a boat. One day, after a long day of ministry, Jesus decided that he was going to take his friends on a little trip in a boat across the lake. And as they were going, it was so calm and peaceful, and it was so relaxing. Maybe the sun was shining, and maybe they sang a little song Row, row, row your boat gently on the seas With Jesus in the back of the boat Life is such a breeze Sing it! Row, row, row your boat gently on the seas With Jesus in the back of the boat Life is such a breeze Oh, it was so peaceful. In fact, it was so peaceful that Jesus fell asleep in the boat. As the afternoon went on, they didn't notice, but it started to get a little bit choppy, and the wind started to get a little bit harder. But still they sang, row, row, row your boat gently on the seas, with Jesus in the back of the boat, life is such a breeze. And then the breeze started to get 
even harder. And the waves started to rock the boat, and they were going side to side. And maybe now, instead of singing their nice, peaceful song, they probably were getting scared, and they probably sang, Save, save, save my boat, I'm drowning on the seas. I'm so scared, I think I'll die. Jesus, help us, please. The disciples had a terrible problem. And you know, the Bible says that you and I have a terrible problem too. It's called sin. Sin is anything that we think, say, or do that breaks God's law. Things like not telling the truth and disobeying our mom and maybe fighting and being selfish. Those things are all sin. And those things deserve to be punished. And the punishment for sin is to be separated from God forever. That's a terrible place to be. Just like the disciples were in a terrible place on the sea. And they were fearful that they were going to die. So then the disciples decided that they would wake up Jesus. And they said, Master, don't you care that we die? Do you think that Jesus cared if they died? Of course he did. Because Jesus loved them. And Jesus loves you too. The Bible says, in fact, that God is love and Jesus is God. So Jesus loves everyone because it's part of who he is. And he loves you just like he loved the disciples. And as the waves crashed over the side of the ship, Jesus stood up and said, peace be still. And immediately the sea was calmed and the disciples were amazed and they said, Wow, does Jesus really have that kind of power? Well, yes, of course Jesus has that kind of power because Jesus is God. In fact, it says in the Bible that nothing was created unless Jesus created it. He's that powerful that he was able to create everything. Of course he's able to calm the sea and he's able to do things in your life as well. He has that kind of power because he is God. Do you think that the disciples were surprised? Of course they were surprised. And you know what? This made Jesus sad because these men had been with him for a long time and they saw him do some great and mighty things. And still they didn't have the faith to be able to trust in him when they were afraid. If you know Jesus as your savior, he can calm your heart when you're afraid. He can give you uh, words to speak when you don't know what to say. He can even help you with your homework. But the most important thing that he has the power to do is he has the power to forgive you of your sin. Now, boys and girls, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you should be afraid because someday you will have to stand before God and you will have to give an answer for all the bad things that you've done. It says in the Bible that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever means anyone who understands that they're in trouble with God because of their sin. And to call in the name of the Lord means to admit that you're in trouble and that you believe that Jesus has the power to save you from your sin. And if you pray and ask him to save you, immediately he will save you. That's a promise from God right here in the Bible. It says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So pray and ask Jesus to save you today. That's so good to be seeing you again, Papuli. Sorry we didn't make it down to pick you up at the pier. Why don't we sing one of those old songs we used to sing? How about Safe Am I? Ah, oh, that's a good choice. Oh.
watching over Reggie for us. Ah, the poor lad was so frightened, he almost shivered right out of his blanket. That reminds me, I've had something in my trunk since I came back to port. Ah, it's me puppy! <laughs> Do you have a place that you go to uh, that you feel safe? You know, sometimes people come into a basement when there's a really bad storm, like a tornado or a hurricane. And you know, even grown-ups are afraid of things. I am afraid of heavy wind storms. I don't like it. It makes me really, really nervous when there's a strong wind outside. And Papa is also afraid of big dogs that I don't know. I've always been afraid of that since I was a little kid. And so God helps me though with those things. And some of you have written in and told me some of the things that you're afraid of. So I want to just take a moment. A lot of, a lot of kids are, are afraid and a lot of grown-ups are afraid of uh, this virus that's going around. And so we're going to pray for that. And, uh, and I'll pray for some of the other things that uh, the kids, that you kids have sent to me. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you that we can come to your throne room and we can lift up our prayer request to you and we know that you hear us because you are a good Heavenly Father. And Lord, I just, uh, I want to pray for this virus. Gabriel is praying against this virus because he knows how serious it is. In Ezra, it, it, it frightens him. And, and Genevieve is afraid that um, some of the older people in our family would get it. And so, Father, we're praying that you would protect our grandmothers and our grandfathers and our moms and dads. And Cadence is, is concerned that her daddy, who works in hospitals, might get sick as well. So we ask that you would protect him as well. Um, Gracie uh, is worried because she got bit by a tick and she is afraid that maybe it would get infected. So I would just pray that you would protect her from getting any kind of sickness from that. Um, I do also want to pray for Sadie who is afraid of uh, wasps and Haley also is afraid of spiders. I pray that you would uh, help them when they're afraid of these things, that they would remember that they can always talk to you. Um, Lord, I, I also want to pray for Glory Ann, who sometimes is afraid of the dark and, and maybe being separated and being alone from her family. I pray that you would help her with this fear. And Sarah is also sometimes afraid of the dark. Um, Wesley uh, is afraid of scary movies sometimes, so I ask Father, that you would protect Wesley when he is sleeping at night, that you would help him to remember that you are more powerful than anything that you see on TV, especially those made-up things that they see, uh, no matter what things that you imagine in the night, that you are more powerful and that you can protect you, him from those kinds of things. I also want to pray for Becca, who is afraid of monsters sometimes, and Father, help her also to know that Jesus is more powerful. And for those 
uh, younger kids. I think of Cedar, who doesn't seem to have any fear because he's just so little. And Josephine, who says that she's not afraid of anything. Father, I pray that you would protect them. Because sometimes if you don't have anything that you're afraid of, then you're not very careful. And I pray that you would, you would watch over them so that they would not get into any kind of harm uh, and, and that they would be protected. So, Father, I do pray for all of these wonderful children that you have given uh, to us and that, uh, that are looking to you and, and, and that are afraid of things. I pray that you would help them this day. And, Father, I do pray that if any one of them does not know Jesus as their Savior, that they would listen to the message that was shared throughout the Puppet Club today and that they would ask Jesus to be their Savior. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. And don't forget, if you have something that you want to share and that you would like us to pray for here at Papa Club, you can send it to uh, this address right here below. and uh, Or your mom and dad can send me a message uh, through this email address or on Facebook or however they normally would contact me. Goodbye, our God is watching over you. Goodbye, His mercy goes before you. Goodbye, and I'll be praying for you. So goodbye, may God bless you. See you next week. songs, having fun, I want to go to Bible Club! Learn about God's own son, let's all go to Bible